What's going on guys? Welcome to the Code Focus channel. Today what we're going to be doing is building a navbar component with plain HTML, CSS, and a little bit of JavaScript. So open up VS Code and make an index.html file along with a style CSS file. And then for our images, we're going to put them in an assets folder. Um, I'm going to link these images in the description for you. So here we're going to use Emmet um, to put an exclamation point. And this will create a layout, a um, boilerplate HTML for us. And uh, Emmet comes with VS Code, so you'll be able to do that yourself. So now go to Google Fonts, and we're going to grab the Ubuntu font. So we'll select the various styles and then copy this link here and paste it right into the head of the HTML. Next, we're gonna link our style sheet. The href is the um, address of the style sheet. Now we're gonna open the project with live server. Um, I think that's an extension of VS Code that you can go ahead and grab. So now we're going to start off with the HTML, go into the body and create a div element for the header container. Give it a class of header dash container. And then within that, we'll use the semantic um, element header and give it a class of header. Then within that, we're going to make three different header sections. Give them each a class of header underscore underscore section. In the first one, we will make an a tag, which is a link tag, and we're going to give it an href of um, home. Make sure you put a hashtag before it. And within there, we'll put an, an h1 element, which is a heading and we'll name it web tools in the next header section put a nav and give it a class of nav and then we'll make three links in there each one having a different href and then give each of these links a class of nav underscore underscore link all right in the third header section we're going to put a button with a class name of call to action button And then we're, we're going to create a second button that's going to be the, the, um, the menu toggle button. And instead of using, <clears throat> using an icon, we're just going to create a, um, an icon ourselves with um, bars. Alright, so that's going to finish up the uh, nav the header component. Now we're going to move on to the main. Here we're going to do three different sections. Well, actually four. Each section should have a class of section. And then um, we'll give each of these sections an additional class uh, representing what the content will be in that section. So the first one is home section, second HTML section, third JavaScript section, and uh, fourth CSS. We're gonna give these sections each an ID also corresponding to the content. And if you remember earlier, um, in the nav we used hrefs and 
with each href we use the hashtag before the name and this will make it so when you click that link it'll it'll go right to um, the section with its corresponding ID so in each of these sections we'll create an article and then for the first one we're gonna do a div with an h1 and a span give the article a class of section con content and then the div a class of hero the h1 should uh, have web tools and the span will have the ultimate trio All right, so now copy the article and everything inside of it and paste it into the next section. Rename that div class to image container and then put a image element within it. And then we'll give that image element a source and we'll um, link to our image in the assets folder. This first one will be the HTML PNG. Remember to give it an alt Alt tags are basically for um, screen readers. <clears throat> the second image should have JavaScript PNG and make sure to edit the alt as well. And then the third should be CSS. So as you can see, all the images are loading. All right, so now that we got the HTML finished up, we're gonna move on to the, the CSS. So first we're gonna do a global and give it a margin zero and a box sizing of border box. Then here we're using the root and this is gonna make it so we can have variables for our CSS. Variables are nice so that um, if you use the same color throughout your CSS you can just link to the variable so if you decide to change that color later you can just change it in one place and then it changes throughout your whole your entire CSS file as you can see that's how it works so I'm just going to copy and paste all the variables in you can go ahead and um, copy all of that then for the body, we're going to give it a background of the background variable and font family, Ubuntu. Earlier, we uh, used Google Fonts to install that. Then we're going to give um, the body a letter spacing of 0.4 pixels, but you can give that whatever you want. Now we're going to um, target the header container and give it a background of background dark a height of header height. We also made header height a variable because we're going to use it in multiple places. We're giving this a width of 100% because we're going to do a position fixed. Um, this is going to make it so when we scroll, um, the header will stay at the top. And as you can see, we have to put top zero so that it stays at the top. Um, same thing for left and right. Now we're going to target the header within the header container and we're going to give that a margin of zero auto. This will make it so there's zero margin on the top and <clears throat> auto on left and right so it'll center the um, element. Now we're going to give it a display of flex and a line item center so that our content is centered and a max width and we're going to use one of our variables again. So that's going to make it so um, it will shrink on smaller screens, but it'll it won't go larger than um, the XL variable. Now we're going to give it a color of um, text and a padding of zero for the top and bottom and 16 for the left and right. Now we're going to target our header sections here. We're going to give them a flex of one. This makes it so each of them um, have the same amount of space distributed between them. And we 
we're going to make each of them um, a display of flex. Now we're going to target certain header sections here. So by saying it in the type, that's uh, I'm putting which uh, one it, which number it is. That'll make it so we can target that exact um, element. So we're going to give the first one a justify content of flex start. So the content is aligned to the left. Um, we're going to give the second one a text decoration of none and a color of inherit. But I think I meant to put that in the first one and I'll change that later. Then we're going to target the second header section here. And give it a height of 100%. And we're going to justify its content to the center. And now we're going to target the third one. And we're going to justify its content to the end or the right. Now we'll move on to the nav. Give it a display of flex and a flex direction of column. We're doing this because since we're making this responsive um, with a mobile first workflow, um, that's how it's going to look on mobile. So later we'll use a breakpoint and make that a flex direction of row. So give that a background of background dark and a padding of eight. And now here we're using a breakpoint at media only screen and min width 48 EM. So that's um, the medium variable, but we can't use variables in breakpoints, so I have to just type that out there. And I'll target the nav within this breakpoint and give it a, bra uh, a background of none and a height of 100 and a flex direction of row. So when you see, uh, as you see when we get to a larger screen, the flex direction will go into a row instead of a column. Here we're going to target the nav links and give them a padding of 8px for the top and bottom and 0 for the left and right. Give them a display of block and a height 100. Display of flex, align item center, justify content center, and a color of inherit. We're doing that because they are link tags, so we need to, um, by default, link tags have a purplish color, like blue or whatever, so we have to put color inherit there. Same thing with text decoration. And then do a transition 0.2 seconds ease all. That's going to make it so when we do this hover uh, right here, it's going to have a transition on the hover. So yeah, for the hover, um, do nav link uh, colon hover. And then give it a box shadow and a color of primary. So as you can see, when we hover it out, hover over it, um, it's have, it, there's a transition effect and you can see the box shadow. Now we're going to do another breakpoint here. Um, min width 48 EM, same thing as above. And we'll target the nav link here. So to give it a margin of 0 and 8 pixels, padding of 0 and 8 pixels. Justify content, initial. And then we're going to target the hover state of this nav link and give it a box shadow, a different box shadow than before. So here I forgot to uh, target hover, but there I just fixed it. All right, now we're going to move on to the button. Um, and then we're going to target the CTA-button class. And basically what we're going to do at first is 
just get rid of all the default styling for the buttons. So outline none, border none, font family inherit, font size inherit, letter spacing inherit, and line height inherit. Now we'll give it a color of the text variable, no, the text dark variable, and a background of the primary variable. Give it a padding of 8 pixels and 16 pixels, and then a uh, border radius of 4 pixels. This will make it so the uh, the borders the, or the corners are all curved. And then give it a cursor of pointer, so when you hover, hover over it with your mouse, um, it's a cursor. Or the cursor changes to, to a pointer. Alright, so here we're going to um, make that custom um, icon for the for the menu. Uh, so target bars, give it a width of 100%, a height of 4 pixels, a margin of 6 pixels and then 0, and then a background of um, the background variable and a border radius of 4 pixels. And then target each bar within bars, give them a width of 100%, a height of 4 pixels, margin 6 pixels 0, a background of background. As you can see, we're doing the same styles here as the bars, which is um, an accident on my part, and uh, I'll have to go back and change that later in the video. Here we're going to target the second bar and we're giving that a width of 75% and a margin left of 25%. So that's gonna make it so this bar, the second bar is like a different width than the other ones. So it's gonna make for like a cool kind of style. Then we're gonna target the second bar um, when it has the open class um, and we're gonna give it a display of none. So when we do assign um, the bar a class of open with JavaScript, um, that second bar is going to disappear. All right, now we're going to target the menu. Uh, give it a position of fixed, a top of header height, so that so that it displays below our our um, our header. And we're going to give it a position uh, left of one hundred percent, so that it it is outside of the screen at first. A, a right of zero, a bottom of zero, and a height of 100% minus header height, since we gave it a top of header height. Um, so having it left 100% is good because we can, we can uh, with JavaScript put a left of zero and then have a transition here. And so when we click the menu button, it'll slide in via animation. So give it a width of 100%. A transition and then a background of overlay and then a padding of 32 pixels now we're gonna target the open class that we're gonna use in Java with the JavaScript and we'll give uh, it a left of zero here we're making a desktop class and we're giving it a display of none and we're gonna use this so um, for like a responsiveness Here we're doing another breakpoint, and we're giving it a min width of 48 EM as before. And we're going to target um, the mobile class, and we're going to give it a display of none, and the desktop a display of flex. So again, the, these classes are for responsiveness. And we're going to assign those classes to some of our HTML elements in a, in a little bit. So we actually forgot to put the header element, or not the header, but the menu element within the header earlier. So what we're going to do is go back to the HTML here and put a div element and give it a class of menu. And then within the menu, um, within the menu class, we'll give it a, another class of mobile and NAD of menu. Giving it an ID here will make it so we can target it in JavaScript easier. Go ahead and copy and paste the nav within the menu then. 
and then give the header section, that second one, a, another class of desktop. And then doing that makes it so it disappears on the mobile view. And do the same for the call to action button. So on larger screens, um, are, I mean on mobile screens, those two elements will be gone. So go back to the CSS now, and we're going to go back to the bars um, class and copy and paste the button reset things, and then give it a background of none, a padding of zero, and a width of 32 pixels. And as you can see, that's going to make our icon look a bit better. Now we're also going to go back to our header sections and give that second one an end of type of one. And that's going to make it so our logo looks good. All right, then go back to the HTML and give that, um, give the menu button a another class of mobile so that it only appears on the mobile view. So I'm just going to show you what the um, menu will look like before we implement JavaScript. So as you can see, when we click the nav links, it goes right to that section. All right. Now we'll get started on the um, main section. So we're going to target the main element and give it a margin top of the variable header height. Then target the section class, give that a height of 100 VH, and that'll make it so each section has a height of the 100% um, of the view height. And then target the nth of type 1 of the section and give it a height of um, 100 VH minus header height. Now we're going to target each individual section and give them different background colors. So as you can see, everything's a bit messy right now, but we're going to fix it up. So target section content and give it a max width of um, var small, um, XL and give that a margin zero of auto, zero auto so that it's centered. Give it a padding of 32 for the top and bottom and 16 for the left and right. A height of 100%, display flex, justify content center, align item center, so the content is centered. Now we're going to give the hero a margin bottom of uh, 150px, but you can, you can make that whatever you want. Now text align center. And then give the each one within the hero a font size of 78 pixels and the hero span a font size of 48 pixels and again you can make these sizes any size you want now we're going to target the image container for each of our images and give it a width of 100% a max width of 500 pixels and a height of 500 pixels and then after that we're going to target the image container again and then the image and give them a width of 100 percent a max width of 100 percent and a height of auto and this will make it so our images are responsive and don't exceed a um, width of 500 pixels so as you can see everything's working now 
the projects coming together but our menu is not hooked up yet so we'll have to dive into JavaScript now so go be, um, go below the body and make a script element and within there uh, we'll just section section things off with comments first section will be for variables second for functions and the third for event listeners so first we'll get the variables going um, target the menu toggle button by doing document dot get element by I um, by ID and target the menu toggle ID and um, we're gonna go ahead and put that on our menu toggle button all right and it's good practice to use camel case for JavaScript stuff so that's why we're doing that instead of using dashes now we're going to make a menu element by targeting document get element by D um, for the menu ID and we already have that on the menu now we'll make um, a bars variable and we'll target a document dot get elements by class name and we'll target the bar class last but not least we will get the nav links variable and this is going to be um, document dot get elements by class name nav links or nav link all right so now we're gonna work on the event listeners so give the menu toggle button a event listener of click and make that callback function menu toggle button or menu toggle handler then in our function our function section we're going to declare that function with um, an ES6 arrow function here and within there we'll do an if statement so if menu element class list contains open then we will target the menu element class list and um, actually we're going to do the opposite so we're going to do if menu element class list contains open or doesn't contain open then we're going to add open to the class list else we're going to remove it All right, so that's gonna make our menu work, as you can see. Now we're going to target um, bars one, and since it's zero index, that's gonna target our second bar, and we'll, we'll add the open to the class list. And again, we're going to remove it in the else section. All right. Now for a second event listener, we're actually going to do a for loop. So this will make it so all of the nav links are um, have the event listener. So for each nav link, we're going to add an event listener here. And then for the callback, we'll do menu close handler. Now we're gonna make that menu close handler function Again, using ES6 syntax for the arrow function and we'll do another if statement here so if menu element dot class list dot contains open so only if the menu is open this function will get run um, so here I'm just showing you what would happen if we didn't use this so when you click the links the menu should close so that's what this is doing so anytime you open the menu, click a link, um, the menu will close automatically and it'll route to that section of the page. That will be it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if this helped you. Um, and let me know in the comments what you guys want to see from me in the future. Thank you. Have a good day.